Hi, I'm Kelsey Hightower, a staff developer advocate for Google Cloud Platform. And I'm Armand Dodgar, co-founder and CTO of HashiCorp. This is the first video in our series covering open source tools from HashiCorp and how we can use them with Google Cloud Platform. In the next few videos, you're going to learn about using Vagrant, Packer, and Terraform with GCP. Armand, can you briefly explain those videos? Sure. Um, you know, Vagrant is a pretty popular tool that many people have maybe played with or at least heard of, and it's commonly used to bring up a development environment in a quick, repeatable manner. Packer falls sort of right after that, helping people to build, build those machine images and build those sort of environments, either for development, so build images for Vagrant, or to build production-oriented images, for example, a GCP a VM image. And then Terraform is kind of next on the kind of development to production uh, life cycle, and it helps people provision infrastructure, whether that's you know, a vSphere cluster locally or a GCP cluster in the cloud. So if I'm a user, I'm hearing all these tools. I'm like, that's a lot of puzzle pieces. Can you touch on how you tie all these tools together? Sure. Uh, I think this really goes back to kind of our mission at HashiCorp and why the company even exists. Uh, when we started the company, it was really to look at that application delivery process from development through to production and say, like, what are those pieces that you really need, the like necessary and sufficient components? And then building an open source tool to do each of those things so that you can provision, secure, and run any type of infrastructure for any type of application. Awesome. And users who I know have played with HashiCorp tools, they all tell me it's like all the tools have a similar look and feel. Is there a common approach you take to building these tools? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. Um, there's a document we've published called the Tao of HashiCorp where we talk about what the design principles and kind of the core philosophy is behind kind of our approach to infrastructure, as well as our approach to actually building uh, tools. And uh, you know, that comes across in kind of the look and feel of the tools themselves. So I think that's one thing that sets HashiCorp apart is how this look and feel of the tools are. Can you talk about some of the principles behind that look and feel? Sure. Uh, you know, we outline all of them in the Tao. There's maybe six or seven of them. But I think the three that are kind of the most important for people is a focus on workflows, infrastructure as code, and immutability. Uh, the workflow focus for us is very, very important because our view is that users are going to bring their own technology, right? So some users, they're going to be, you know, living in a world of vSphere and on-premise, and how do we meet them there? And other users are going to be fully in the cloud, running everything in GCP, and how do we support that? And other people are going to cross this entire spectrum. So that's sort of our focus on workflow as opposed to technology. And then when we get to immutability, the idea is how do we avoid changing our applications, our machines, our you know, infrastructure in place where we might introduce errors into production and cause things to fail in sort of unexpected ways and instead build brand new versions that we fully know and understand and can vet? And I think then the third kind of most important one is this notion of infrastructure as code, uh, which is another technique to, to kind of manage the complexity and make sure we can you know, go to large scale in the same way. So I have a lot of experience with infrastructure as code, but maybe for some of the people out there watching, could you give me a little bit more detail about what infrastructure as code is and what it means to HashiCorp? Yeah, it's a, you know, I think it's a pretty general idea. It can apply to all sorts of things, but I think the kernel of it is this notion that you know, what we're used to is having sort of in our heads the idea of how our development environment is built, how our clusters are managed, and what we're really trying to do is take that that's locked away in our head and bring it in and have it live as code that actually can be executed, right? And this way, we can version control it, we can reuse it, we can share it with one another, we can extend it over time, and we can really begin to apply the best practices of software development to infrastructure management, right? And so the goal is to kind of get away from the oral tradition where you're like, you know, Bob in the corner really knows how everything works and nobody else does. All right, so let's be honest, like, is this technique unique to Terraform, or do you see this technique in other places? So it's a bit loaded, because I know you used to work at Puppet. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I think to give credit where credit's due, I think this idea was really first pioneered by the config management community, where they really realized that it's getting increasingly complicated to manage a modern server. So just understanding users and packages and files and directories and permissions, blah, it was too much. So how do we have all of that live as code and be able to manage our servers in this programmatic way? So I think the config management community really pioneered it. And now we've taken that and are applying it to sort of the broader HashiCorp tool chain. Awesome. So you talked about this focus on workflows. How does that focus on workflows affect HashiCorp and GCP? Yeah, it's a great question. Uh, you know, like I said, for us, it's this belief that 
we have to meet our users where they are in terms of their technology choices. And for us, a huge part of our community lives and operates and consumes GCP. So for us, it's really important to make sure with Vagrant, you can have a development box in GCP. With Packer, you can build images for it. Terraform, you can manage your GCP clusters, so on and so forth. It's that all of the tool chains should integrate with GCP because that's a technology choice users want to make. All right, so hey, thanks Armand for joining me today. How can more people learn about more of HashiCorp tools and the philosophy behind HashiCorp? Yeah, thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure, Kelsey. Uh, I'd recommend people visit our homepage, HashiCorp.com, to learn more about the company and the tools. Uh, or alternatively, people can just watch your talk on YouTube that you gave at HashiConf about delivering a 12-factor app with the HashiStack. Cool. So hey, thanks everyone for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to keep up with more of the open source videos in this series. We got more to come for how you can use other open source tools with GCP. Cool. All right, thanks for watching. Make sure to check out these other cool videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe.